Hello and welcome to Let's Make Tracks. In this video we're going to be building a baseboard. Now TT, tabletop as the name suggests, great for on top of the table, but the table is necessary for other things. So what I've decided to make a tabletop table. So it'll be a baseboard and eventually I'll get around to adding legs to it, so tabletop table. So, let's get down to it, run the intros, and let's get building. Dinner, what? Bolt. So naturally the first thing you need to do is get yourself wood. So I'm heading down to my local hardware store and I'm just fortunate enough that they actually provide a wood cutting service here. This is particularly important because I need to make sure that the actual boards are the exact size so I can build the frame around them. So now I have two boards measuring exactly 36 by 43 inches so I can concentrate on the frames to support the underside to help prevent warping. So I measure up all my battens to the right length and then cut them where appropriate. Measuring twice, cutting once, obviously. A little bit hypocritical of me, but I do strongly advise against doing this kind of work in your kitchen. Uh, you don't want to damage your work surfaces. I'm only getting away with this because Lady Red doesn't actually live with me at this current time. So after all the pieces have been cut, what we should have is the baseboard, uh, two long battens for the edges, three shorter battens for either end of the board plus the middle, and then the framing for the one short side and the two long sides. Obviously the other short end being left open to accommodate the track go from one board to the other. The first thing I do is mark out where the screw holes are basically going to go on all the boards. So I will line up boards and battens and frames where possible and mark out exactly where their neighbour is going to sit. Once all the holes are marked out, I'll drill the hole through with a drill bit that is 0.5mm smaller than the screws I'm planning on using. To connect the frames at the 90 degree angle that I require for the board, uh, what I'll do is I'll put screws through the holes that we've just drilled, but I'll only have the tip exposed by a few millimetres, and this is so that I can line up the board with its neighbour once again, and this time just push the screw that's protruding into the next board, and this will tell me exactly where I need to drill. Apologies, the camera's really out of focus here, but the marks left are here, here, and here. So I know exactly where I need to drill the holes to accommodate the screws. I'm sure many of you are already aware of this, but the pilot holes are to help prevent the narrow board from splitting when the screw passes through from one to the other. So get a better look at the holes there following the marks so once everything is lined up and ready add a little bit of wood glue just to help with the bond and then we'll screw them together again this is not the best way of doing this but uh, with my limited resources I had no choice so using my set square 
I try my best to make sure it's at a 90 degree angle and then just tighten up all the screws. Rinse and repeat, that's how I put all the framing and the battens together. Now that the frames are all assembled, I can attach the main board on top. So I've made sure everything's at a 90 degree angle throughout to make sure it still fits. So similar to what I did with the frames, I mark out where the beams are under the board. And then once everything is in place, I drill through my markings uh, every, I think it was 10 centimeters through to the batten below, which is in place. So I'm screwing through the board and the batten at the same time here. And then I'll just pump the screws straight through. But um, before that, I will flip it over and apply a PVA glue, which I didn't actually film here. Now that the two boards are complete, I can attach them together. And the hinge I've chosen to do that with is this one. Now, you'll probably recognize this as the hinge you find on painter decorator tables. When it comes to attaching, the hinge will sit perfectly with the two edges here and here. I've already uh, screwed, uh, not screwed, drilled two holes to where we're going to attach it. And we will be attaching it with two bolts, some washers, and obviously the nuts, and an additional hinge on the opposite side for strength. So with these hinges, you have a nice rivet on one side and then the other side's a little bit ugly. We're going to have the ugly side facing inward. I've cut a little bit of the wood away to accommodate the uh, protrusion of the hinge so we can get everything to line up nicely. And then it's just a simple case of uh, bolting everything together. So screw, washer, hinge, wood, obviously, hinge, washer, nut and then tighten rinse and repeat so i think it's only fair at this point to test to make sure everything works and i can confirm it does leaves a little bit of adjustment here and there but all good so the last thing to attach is these uh, clasps. These will just help keep the board together and in alignment when uh, it's in play mode. Right, so the only thing left to do now is paint it. Because they always tell you it's important to paint it, but they don't tell you why to prevent bowing and warping and I've already had a little issue with bowing on this already so first up layer of PVA all over followed up by some white primer and according to the ladies in B&Q between the two of these this should protect it quite nicely so I'm going to get on with that I'm not going to film that because this is probably tedious enough as it is so I'm gonna do that and I'll go la, 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 la. I will do that and I will back be back I can't talk I'm going to paint it and I will be back in the next video where I'm probably gonna be laying some track and I'll show you how to deal with this gap over here so thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time oh, don't forget like and subscribe helps the channel quite a lot and uh, follow me on Facebook and join the Facebook group TT120 Showcase and Cheer. Cheer? Share. Showcase and Share. I have a speech impediment that I'm not aware of clearly. Right. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again in the next one. Goodbye.
just run through some quick additions since uh, the last time we were here so i just uh, get the board out of storage mode unfold it and we'll take a closer look so as you can see i've already installed some track and we're going to be going over how i make this join a little bit later in the video seems to behave So for the undercoat, I use this Valspar primer and undercoat in white, along with the PVA, cover the whole board. Then we have a towel on blue. This is for the sky. This is the closest shade I could get without it being too cartoony. And then we have a Liberty Black gloss finish for the outside frames. I think it's come out nicely. I've added these additional bracing pieces on the side. This is just to protect the uh, protruding screws bolts and uh, the hinges while the boards put away save them dragging along the floor i already have the first two tracks in place so what i'm going to do is uh, install the third one prematurely just to show you how i did it so first thing you need a piece of track to ensure the rails line up after opening and closing i'm going to be using these pro track rail aligners and we'll go into more detail with these a bit later on to ensure I get the correct distance in between the tracks, what I'm going to do is use uh, some spare points I have laying around and some sixth radius curves to create a temporary, well, I suppose it's a runaround loop. This will help ensure that the uh, track centers are the correct distance apart and all the track pieces are in line also. So with the last piece of cork that I have, well, I pre-cut a load of them from the sheet I did have. Uh, they are the exact width, give or take, of uh, the track to minimise wastage. So I just slip that under there. And then I'm going to use these uh, alignment gauges. Um, I can't remember where I got them from. I'll put some sort of graphic on the screen somewhere on eBay. But when it comes to basically sealing down the cork, I want to make sure it's absolutely in the right place. So all the set track pieces are in alignment. The distance is correct, so time for glue. So your old favorite, PVA. Now before gluing your cork down, you might want to think about separating the piece. Um, I've got just enough space in between the balls where I could slice just straight down the middle and then push both ends together to accommodate the gap. I'm not actually going to do that with my one because I want to make absolutely sure that all the levels are correct so I'm going to cut it in situ. So the first thing, run a bead of glue down the centre of the cork. Just give it a little rub around with my finger. You could do this with a brush but I enjoy doing this. So now I just flip this over and pop it back under the rails. So all that effort I did to make sure the tracks were in alignment was kind of undone. So I'll just pop these gauges back on here. Make sure it's in absolutely the right place. And after a quick bit of adjustment, just to make sure it's in exactly the right place I want it, it's time to move on to the next stage. Stop! Hammer time! Do, 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 do. I'm sorry. Now, this hammer I bought especially for this task, but as you can see, it's still too wide for the tracks. So I'm going to show you a little technique that I've been using. But first... Sorry, not sorry. So with the pliers, I'm just push those pins just that last little way and they go in quite nicely to wood, so I'm going to do this one slowly for you. Ooh, there she goes. So now they're all properly lined up, I'll just have a little clean up there. So that'll do for now. I'll uh, probably come back to this tomorrow and uh, we'll move on. Okay, so I've got my piece of track and I'm going to be bridging the gap with these Pro Track rail aligners. So the idea is they go directly in the middle and they slot together and every time the tracks meet they should align perfectly. Now I just need to cut the ends off these alignments because I want to preserve as many sleepers as possible. So I just nip off the little ends just so they fit in where I want them to. But before I do that I need to remove three sleepers from either side of the join 
so uh, the aligners can slip in. So I just cut along the uh, rail chairs just to release them. And they should, once you've cut out enough from one rail, pop off. There we go. Of course, you need to make sure you fully cut through the underside as well. Now, what I should have done before cutting that off was actually mark where the uh, the center is or where I'm going to be cutting. And this will help me uh, align up the aligners so that uh, the cut will go in the right place. So I'll just repeat the process for the free sleepers on the other side to accommodate the other aligner. So at this point, I'll just give the aligners a test fit just to see how we're getting on. But as I say, I do still need to take the ends off uh, just to preserve the last sleepers on either side because I want to save as many of them as possible. The pliers I have have this handy little nipper at the top which comes in handy. One last test fit and that fits in there quite nicely. So we're ready for soldering. Just for transparency, soldering is not my strongest ability. As you do, you tin both sides of what you want to bond and then heat them both together to stick them together. When doing any work on the track section that still has sleepers attached, I use this trick. I get two tweezers and a pair of grips. And what this does is it stops the heat from the soldering iron from melting the sleepers. I'm going to use this old uh, cutting board in an attempt to protect my table because uh, bare metal on the table will leave some nasty marks as we're going to see in just a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to reassemble my anti-melt jig and then we're going to solder the aligners to the track. So as I've said, soldering is not my, uh, not my favourite job and it's also not where my talents lie. Another issue I came across was uh, the solder on one side or the other not heating up properly and creating a bump in the join. So I use my pliers to push down on the rail and try my best to heat up the rail and the aligner evenly. And hopefully this will uh, create a smooth bond. This is messy as all hell. But after I get that off with a little bit of a flick, that is not coming off anytime soon. And here is why it's always a good idea to do all your soldering on a heat proof surface. Lucky for me, this uh, cutting mat was uh, on the way out anyway. Another problem to add to the list where the uh, mat was a bit out of shape, it's caused the track to go out of shape as well. So I just strain it out a bit. So uh, that doesn't rock anymore. So very good. Now, this is not the best soldering work in the world. It's messy as hell. I need to file it down, but it's ready to install on the track. Time for the old switcheroo. So I just gently remove these pins. Hopefully the track isn't too stuck down and I'll be able to just pick it up. Yikes. Well, it's not a big deal. Everything's still intact. While I'm here, I'll just cut the cork. Obviously, that will remain perfectly in line. Might have to glue the edges back down. So what I'm going to do with the new piece, I'll just pop the pins into the holes. So obviously, they're all in the exact same places. So this should, in theory, just slot straight back in. So I'll just relocate the hole. It's just there. So that will just pop straight back in there. And can just push that one back in with my finger and I should be able to do the same for all four but let's be honest pushing pins hurts so I'll just crack up my old friend there we go snug as a bug 
the alignment pieces come with additional pinholes. Uh, I'm putting a picture in the uh, top left corner over there to show which holes I'm taking advantage of. Obviously at the edge of the board this is important for everything not shifting. So you know what time it is? Now this was uh, quite soul destroying to find this in edit, but a little bit of tinkering here and there and crisis averted. The time has come to separate the two boards. Now it would be completely and utterly easier to do this with the track separate to the board so I could get a straight cut. However, as I've already said, I wanted to make sure the rails aligned perfectly. Um, obviously, there was a bit of an issue with this with the uh, previous issue, but as I say, this has all been corrected now. So now for the final stage to connect the power between board A and board B. So, drill your holes and attach your dropper wires to the track. Remembering that old covenant of the railway modeler black at the back and that way you won't get any uh, polarity issues pop the wires through your holes so as you can see i've put uh, all the holes on the same sides of the boards and the wires stay on their sides for now so when they poke through you create these plug pieces with uh, terminal blocks and the power pins screw it all together as i'm showing here and then this creates a nice little plug and this can just plug together after you've unfolded the board you could and most people do this kind of wiring underneath the board but to uh, put up and put away quicker I decided to put it on top and just hide it under a building. Time to see if all my efforts have been worth it or in vain. Will they make the gap? Will they get all the way around the board? So many questions. So I'm going to call that a success. So there's two running lines I have at the moment, the up and the down. Um, obviously I'm going to have to complete the third loop when I'm able to get some more track from Hornby. But yeah, the system works. They're running very well. I'm quite happy. Thank you for joining me on my little uh, track building adventure here. Obviously the skills and techniques I have shown in this video are purely my own. <laughs> and uh, by all means you can adapt techniques to suit your needs or skill levels. And by no stretch of the imagination am I claiming to be an expert in any of this stuff. This is literally just how I did it. And there's probably a thousand and one better ways of doing it. But anyway, thank you all for watching very, very, very much. If you could all do me a solid, if you could drop a like and subscribe to the channel, that would help me out immensely. Follow me on Facebook, Let's Make Tracks, TT120. There's also the Facebook group, TT120 Showcase and Share. Right, that'll do for this week, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.